for Edge. And the red box is uh, how this feature will impact user experience. So it might be improved manageability, resiliency, scalability, some of those things to give you, give you an idea of where these features are taking us. So one of the big ones for Queens that's really exciting is support for vGPUs. Uh, vGPUs are virtual graphics processing units, and they're incredibly powerful for certain types of high performance workloads. Obviously, given the name, you do see them in graphic intensive workloads, but you also see a lot of users dump that graphic side and use them for anything where they really have compute intensive needs. So scientific workloads, machine learning, AI, anything that needs that scalable compute power that GPUs provide, but now they'll get that with a virtualization factor. So Nova has added this vGPU support, and in Queens, cloud admins will be able to define flavors that request vGPU resources, specify those resolutions, and those users can now boot VMs with vGPUs. Another big one is Cinder Multi-Attach. Um, a big shout out to the Nova and Cinder teams. I know this is a, was a complicated feature and a long time in the making, and it's finally come out in Queens. So the Cinder Multi-Attach feature means that you can attach the same single Cinder volume to multiple VM instances. And this volume multi-attach feature is one of the most highly requested features in cloud environments because an obvious benefit is that you can have two nodes accessing the same volume. So if one goes down, the other can take over and it has access to that data. So it really supports those enterprise users who need robust environments um, and users with those high availability use cases. Ironic rescue mode is a feature that goes kind of in that operator friendly category that we were talking about. Um, Ironic is the bare metal project. And in the last year, particularly the last six months, we've seen some really notable user growth in Ironic through our user survey. So it's great that the Ironic team has stepped up and offered this very user friendly feature. Uh, with Ironic mode, it's easier for any user of Ironic to kind of have the safety net. So if things happen, like they, something won't boot correctly, something's misconfigured, they lose an SSH key, they have a backup, they have a plan B. So it's a, a small feature, but will have a huge impact. Career CNI daemon. Uh, this is about improving scalability for users that have a mixed OpenStack and Kubernetes environment. So if you're not familiar with Courier, it's a growing OpenStack project that bridges container networking frameworks and OpenStack networking. So Courier isn't an all-encompassing networking solution. It's really more about finding those gaps between what's expected of container networking and Neutron so OpenStack users can deploy containers at scale without piecemealing networking solutions for those corner cases. One example of um, this is the Courier CNI daemon, new for Queens. So this installs a daemon in the Kubernetes node. So rather than the user waiting on the Kubernetes API for each event, the CNI daemon is constantly watching for those pod events and is able to respond. So you're getting increased scalability of Kubernetes for OpenStack users and obviously supporting that HA use case again. This also provides um, a little extra HA support if the courier controller goes down. Because of the daemon, you're still able to do things like create pods. So supporting, again, those enterprise robust HA users. This one, kind of like ironic rescue mode, um, is another small feature that I think will have a huge impact in terms of user experience for our operator friends. Uh, the heat team added a Horizon plugin for heat orchestration templates, also known as HOT. And so now there's a WYSIWYG drag and drop interface for generating those templates, whereas previously they were just plain text files that you had to know how to configure correctly and send them in. And if uh, my PowerPoint skills are what I think they are, we should have a little demo here. There we go, yep. So you're just dragging and dropping what you need to configure that template. Um, Quick little demo there, but much more friendly than inserting a plain text file. So register and document policy and code. This is um, kind of a big one because it was a community-wide goal for the Queen's release. So previously, role-based access controls, or our back policies, were documented in a file that lived separately in the project source. So this meant that if someone needed to read a policy or make a change or you know, find out if something applied to them, they had to go not only find this file, but then hunt through it, 
to understand and find what they're looking for. So it's kind of this arduous journey that we sent the user down. Uh, but now in Queens, and the majority of projects, if they weren't complying with us already, they've now changed and are going to are complying with us in Queens. Um, majority of the projects, they have those policies written in, in the project code. So it gives better communication about those service policies and um, we'll also hopefully see the ability to set some more granular defaults for those RBAC policies because it has that easier discoverability. Another thing we added for Queens is this release, hi release highlights page. Uh, you know, we recognize it can be challenging to keep up with all the features that come in every new release, and we can't even capture all of them in this webinar. So we've created a page at releases.openstack.org slash queens slash highlights.html, and we asked the PTLs to submit their top highlights to this page. So if you've ever sent an email to a PTL saying, hey, what are the top five things that changed in Queens? Um, we've asked them to send those answers to one single page for you. So it's easier for them, easier for you, and uh, you know, it tackles some of those communication challenges we have with understanding everything that's going on in such a big project. Obviously, this is the first iteration, and it's a work in progress that we'll be tackling next week at the PTG. Um, so if you take a peek and have suggestions, feel free to send them my way. We're we're happy to take your input for the next iteration. And there were a handful of new projects that were added to OpenStack in the Queen's cycle. Uh, you know, in the past few cycles, we've talked about changes to the big tent model and trying to kind of get a more defined view of what is OpenStack. So on the surface, it might sound a little contradictory that we say, hey, there's new projects. But these projects really focus on very particular areas of operational enhancements. So they're not about tacking on a completely new component or reinventing some wheel that actually exists somewhere else outside of OpenStack. They're about very particular things um, and very nuanced operational projects. So the first one is OpenStack Helm. Um, OpenStack Helm is, takes some cross-community collaboration between OpenStack and Kubernetes. And so Helm in Kubernetes, Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes that lets you define, install, and upgrade your applications that you're running on Kubernetes. It uses a thing called Helm charts. And Helm charts are just a collection of files that describe a related set of Kubernetes resources. So OpenStack Helm is the collection of Helm charts that let you manage the lifecycle of OpenStack services that you're running on top of Kubernetes. And the way the Helm, OpenStack Helm team has set this up is each service has its own chart. So you don't have to run all the OpenStack services. You can decide, I just want these three, I just want these two, or I want 15. And you can manage them independently. And so we're seeing that this is a really promising project for users who want to put OpenStack services at the edge, who want to containerize OpenStack for easier upgrade paths. And we've already seen from telcos that OpenStack Helm is going to provide a lot of value for their use cases. So it's really great to see this as an official project for Queens. Another new one is OpenStack Mazakari, which helps clouds achieve high availability from various VM failure events by automating the rescue mechanism. They're brand new for Queens, um, so we can expect to see a lot more out of them in the Rocky release. But again, another exciting project that's added to the fold. OpenStack Loki is a project that makes compact but complete open container initiative, OCI, obviously as in the name Loki, uh, compact but complete OCI compatible images of OpenStack services. So these can be dropped into heavyweight tools like Helm, or they can be used individually to deliver services standalone, like you might want to deliver cinder block storage, containerized. Loki will help you get there. Cyborg is another new one for Queens, and it's a general management framework for managing software and hardware accelerators. Um, if you're not in the weeds on some of this stuff, the phrase accelerator can sound kind of funny, but it's really just referring to any resource that's been used to get more efficiency than a standard GPU, or excuse me, standard CPU, including GPUs. So, you know, we say it's um, for hardware accelerators and software accelerators, we're talking about things like crypto cards, GPUs, DPDK. And um, particularly for telcos and NFE workloads, acceleration has really become a necessity rather than an option. 
So Cyborg helps those operators list, identify, and discover those accelerators. They can do things like attach and detach them to an instance, install and uninstall drives associated with them. Um, and it can be used standalone or in conjunction with Nova or Ironic. And before we move on to Rocky, I do want to share some things um, that makes the Queen's release a little special. So at the suggestion of the community, the OpenStack Technical Committee has dedicated the Queen's release to the memory of Sean Pierce, who passed away in January. Uh, Sean was the founder of Garrett, which has really been at the center of OpenStack's development process since the Diablo release. And Sean's work in the space of developer tooling and collaboration has just been essential to OpenStack's growth and success, and not only OpenStack, but many other open source projects. If you're interested in learning more about Sean, um, a simple internet search will bring up no shortage of ways that he made an impact on software and the lives of many open source contributors. So the technical committee ran a patch through Garrett to dedicate the Queen's release to him. So next week, the development teams will be gathering in Dublin to start work on the Rocky release. The Rocky release is due out at the end of August, um, but we can already point to a few planned features that we think you might be really excited about. So one of these is fast forward upgrades, part of which you'll see in Queens, but it, the work will continue and we'll, we expect to see more from them in Rocky. So fast forward upgrades is about letting users jump ahead more than two releases. So if I'm on Newton and I wanna to go to Queens, I can quickly cycle through um, Okada and Pike. There's some alternative install methods that kind of speed up those interme intermediate releases so I can get where I wanna be a little bit faster. Another one we expect to see is minimum bandwidth and bandwidth-based scheduling coming from networking. Um, that'll be particular interest to NFE and cloud service providers for doing things like ensuring a minimum level of performance for something like a streaming service. And one of the community-wide goals on the table for Rocky is to enable mutable configuration across services, which is really just about letting operators change configuration settings without restarting a service. So again, um, a community feature that speaks to our operator friends and just providing that better overall experience. And you know, as you know, things can always change between now and the final release, but these are just some exciting features to keep an eye on down the road. And after this call, all of this will be up at openstack.org slash marketing. So you can visit it there. Um, and we just have a few quick community updates and then we'll open it up to Q&A. So last week, um, there was a new Edge white paper released. And if you remember last year, there was the open dev event in San Francisco that brought together people interested and invested in edge computing from not only OpenStack, but adjacent communities, um, kind of across, across sectors from telcos, but also retail, we saw a lot. And they came together to kind of talk about what are those technical requirements of edge computing. They formed an edge working group, and last week they released their first product, which is this edge white paper that really looks at defining those technical requirements, getting them down in writing. Uh, we saw contributors for, like AT&T, Cisco, Ericsson, HPE, Walmart, Verizon, um, just across the board, across industries. So if you're interested in checking that out, it's at openstack.org slash edge. And of course, before we know it, the Vancouver Summit will be here. And we hope you're planning to join us May 21st through 24th in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, this summit's gonna be a little bit different because it's about much more than just OpenStack. There's new tracks like HPC, Edge, and container infrastructure. And people were encouraged to submit talks whether they were based in OpenStack or not. So we'll see kind of some of these new open infrastructure areas being talked about at the summit. Um, the other thing is that open dev event that I mentioned this year is now focused on CICD and it will be co-located with the summit. So if you know someone who's an, interested in CICD, this is really the place to be and they'll get the added benefit of being able to check other, out some of these other open infrastructure tracks while they're there. Uh, the schedule will be released mid-March, but early bird tickets are already on sale and will close that in, in early April. So if you're interested, grab your ticket now. That's the best price. And if you remember from the 2015 Vancouver Summit where Summit Hotels sold out, you might want to grab one of those as well while they're still available. And here's just a quick preview of um, some of the speakers we have. You know, wide variety really showcases this evolving open infrastructure use cases. 
And then in November, we will have the Berlin Summit, uh, November 13th through 15th. Early bird registration is open for that already, um, as well as sponsorship. So if you're interested in sponsorship, email summit at openstack.org for more information. And with that, we will open it up um, to anyone who has some questions. You can feel free to unmute yourself or you can drop your question in the chat. Yes, Gary, that's correct. That's where the deck will go. Openstack.org slash marketing. I had to give you at least one question. Sure. <laughs> I'd love a question. <laughs> Excellent. Well, if there's no other questions, um, thank you so much for joining us and a shout out to our fabulous development community that put together this Queen's release. We think there's some really exciting features for you and your users. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great rest of your day.